Hello makers, today I'm going to take the MMU and shrink it down to a neat little package on top of the Core 1, thereby saving me some space and also some money. Along the way, I'm gonna do a few modifications. So stick around, because this is gonna be awesome. The Prusa Core 1 MMU3 is an awesome upgrade to get. There is one downside, and that is the footprint that it takes to install the buffer and the spool holders. The shelf right here could hold up to three Core 1s. However, one of the Core 1s has an MMU3 to it. So that space is taken up by the spool holders. This area measures around 58 centimeters by 45 centimeters, which roughly translates to about 0.26 square meters. Now, a small lesson in the monetary value of such a small space. As I'm recording this video, a square meter of property where I live costs 3,300 euro. Which means that this space right here, it costs me 850 euro. Now with that in mind, and the fact that I cannot magically increase the area of my studio, the only way to go is up. Now there are a few designs on printables for a more compact MMU alternative by using the space on top of the Core 1, therefore keeping the same footprint of the printer but still having the full functionality. I settled on making this remix version by Sam. It's simple, it uses the least filament, roughly about 2.5 kilos, and does the job. So I got all my machines working and printed all the parts required in PEG. Since I print a lot of ASA and ABS, I did need the top cover to be a bit more heat resistant than PLA. Aside from nuts and bolts and roller bearings, you will also need the community version of the MMU3 cable in order for it to reach the board from the unit. So the first port of call is to install the new MMU cable, which is a relatively easy process. You just open the electronic box, take out the old cable, install the new one, take the other end and secure it to the MMU3 unit, tie it with a zip tie, and then once again, covering the electronic box and the cable cover at the back of the Core 1. The mounting feet of the MMU need to be replaced with the newly 3D printed slider feet instead. This will allow the MMU unit to slide into the new mounting plate we have printed. Next is the new top cover for the Core 1, which will replace the Perspex lid which comes stock with the machine. It comes in four parts and as far as I could tell it does not require any glue to hold it together as it has relatively secure locking sliders. Once the top cover is done, it is time for the vent cover. Uh, this goes in quite easy, requires two screws. The important thing here is to not over tighten the screws in order to allow the vent cover to slide from open to close. Next up is the MMU3 bracket, which secures itself with eight bolts. And following that, it's time for the top rails, which secure themselves with a couple of bolts and a couple of square nuts from the bottom. Once it was done, it was just a matter of putting it on the Core 1 and sliding in the MMU unit. There are a few iterations of this motor. I chose the one with the spool rollers at the bottom because I feel they create much less friction on the spool. And finally, it's time for the buffer, which goes together very easily with a bunch of M3 bolts. From there, it's just a matter of inserting the buffer wheels taken out from the original buffer unit of the MMU and sliding in the two spool rollers at the bottom of the rails. Now by this time I was already noticing a few details from the build and the model itself that I would personally have changed, starting with the spool not looking to be sturdy enough or secure on the rollers, which could lead to the spool falling off the edge. After placing all five buffers units in place, I realized that the whole thing ends up protruding quite a bit from the original rail frame, which wasn't ideal. I'm okay with the top cover slightly extending over the core one frame, but I I felt like this was a bit too much. So I started going through all the available step files on printables for the parts to see if I can fix this. The buffer roller cassette goes in just fine, however there are a few millimeters of extra room which are not necessary. So the first thing I did was I trimmed down about 2 millimeters of the buffer cover. This made the buffer cassette go in just as well as before, but now there is no more play. Next was the spool holder itself. In my mind, I was thinking that if I could remove one of the sides of the roller carriages, I could save about three millimeters more. So I decided to integrate half of the roller carriage into the spool holder itself. This actually worked in two ways because not only did I manage to save a few millimeters of width, but I also created an anchor point for the spool as now it will not slide around. And while there, I also trimmed down the uh, large wall that attaches to the buffer and saved a little bit more space there. An addition I did include was a PTFE guide. This way the PTFE tube would not have to be hanging and dragging when the spool is turning, which would in turn create more friction for the filament path. 
In case you're wondering, all the links to these files and the new modified files are in the video description. You know, that, that area where, where it's just underneath the subscribe button, which if you press, turns into a bell, which you can then press again and change to all notifications. It, it, it also sits right on top of the comment section. Just saying. With those modifications in place, I reprinted all the parts and placed the new units on the top rail. This ended up being almost, I mean, almost on point. So I decided to do one last bit of modification and that is the top rail itself. I extended it by a couple of millimeters to match the length of all five spool holders, but I also added a sidewall on each end in order to prevent them from sliding out. And then I finished it off with a chamfer to follow the lines of the original design. The last final touches are to install the PTFE tubes. Now, for those keen-eyed viewers, you will notice that the direction of the PTFE tubes that I'm installing are completely opposite as to what is shown on printables. The reason I inverted the directions of the PTFE tubes is to create the path of least resistance with less bends and also shorter tubes. With the whole project now complete, it was simply a matter of installing the spools. Now, with the modifications I made and depending on the print settings that you use, I managed to save roughly about 200 grams of filament in total, but most importantly, about six hours worth of printing. Now, I understand that this might not be the cleanest look you can possibly have for an MME3. Uh, there are quite a few alternative models on printables, which make it look more visually appealing, let's say. In my case, I just wanted something to be functional. I wanted to save the space and this did the job with, I feel, the least amount of effort. And more importantly than that, I now get to fit my third core one on my shelf with one of these machines also having the MMU3 on top of it. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, great job, dumb ass. You fit three core ones next to each other. How are you gonna get the spools out from the other two that don't have the MMU? And, and you'd be right about the spools part, but I'm gonna leave the explanation of how I'm gonna solve that issue for another video. In the meantime, I wanna thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and as always, happy making everyone.